Today what we're going to talk about are credit cards and um, there's a lot of details to deal with the credit cards and we're going to try and you know keep focused on um, you know things that seem consistent with this class right uh, how is interest computed um, you know minimum payments things like that okay so the way a credit card works as a financial object okay is that every time that you swipe your credit card, you're effectively taking out a loan. And the idea is rather than going through the whole process of a loan every time we want to use it, they say, well, we want you to use this frequently. We'll just create the terms once at the beginning, and those will be your terms every time you use your credit card. Okay. So then you can use a credit card over and over again, and, and there's no, you know, everything is seamless and automatic. Okay. And um, the way in which credit card seems a little bit different from a loan, when you take out a loan, you borrow a bunch of money, and then you make payments to pay it back until it's down to zero. With a credit card, it's different because they don't really ever expect you to be done using it. They want you to kind of perpetually use it. So maybe you use it and pay it off every month, maybe use it and carry a balance every month, but either way, there's a different sort of feeling than a loan because the, you know, the, the credit card never has any um, um, like requirement that you pay it off like it's a loan. They just want you to keep making payments on it, right? Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do when we look at a credit card is not look at like the full term of a loan, like, you know, a 10 or 20 year loan for a house, we're going to look at it sort of month by month and, and see what's going on. Okay, so there's a few things I want to talk about. First of all, um, is the grace period. With most credit cards, if you pay your full balance every month, they don't charge you any interest. Okay, now one of the things that made me, that, that, that this sort of, you know, made me curious about, I thought if everyone behaved financially responsible, if everyone paid off their credit card every month, how would the credit card company make any money, right? They still have employees and stuff. They have to make money. And it turns out credit cards uh, charge people on both ends. They charge you interest, but they also charge the vendor something every time you use it. So it's usually somewhere between 1% or, and 2% of the purchase price. But every time you buy something with a credit card, the credit card charges the vendor uh, a percentage of, of that sale, of that transaction. Okay. So... Even if they never made a single cent off of you directly, they would still be making plenty of money. All right. The, uh, the way that the credit card is going to compute your interest rate is they, they use something called average daily balance. And every credit card that I've looked at, um, you know, and, I, and sometimes I, I just look through random credit cards just to get information on this. They all use the same method, this average daily balance method for computing interest. Okay, and so the way that this works is they break the, the billing period into days and they look at your balance at the end of each day. And so for a month, what they do is they average all of those balances together and that's your average daily balance. Okay, so one way to think about that is if I make a huge charge at the beginning of the month, let's suppose I buy something for $1,000 and I sit on that for the whole month, They've loaned me $1,000 for almost a month, and then come my bill, maybe I pay it off, right? Okay, if somebody else buys a $1,000 item at the end of the month, they might have only taken out that loan for $1,000 for a few days before they get their bill. It doesn't make sense to charge the same amount of interest for somebody who had it for, say, three days and somebody who took out a loan for, say, 25 days, right? So they don't. What they do is they say, okay, if you... If you loaned, you know, if you bought something at the beginning of the month and you had a big balance, you will have that balance for many days of that month, so your average daily balance will be higher. So that's sort of the reasoning behind this. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to look at uh, an example here um, of a like a month statement. We'll look at a, a January statement on a credit card, and this isn't an actual statement. I just want to look at maybe something a little bit simplified and sort of pick apart some of the pieces so you can see how some of this stuff works. Okay, So what we do is we're going to have some transactions. The, 
we're going to start with a previous balance. So we're going to say that this person um, left twelve hundred dollars on their on their credit card from last month, and then on January third they bought gas for forty dollars, and on January eighth they made their December payment of a thousand dollars. Okay, and then on the fifteenth they bought gas again. And on the twenty fifth they bought groceries, and on the twenty ninth maybe they bought clothes. Okay, and that and that was it for the month. Okay. So their previous balance was $1,200. If you buy something for $40, you know, it adds 40. Okay. If I make a thousand dollar payment, it goes down by a thousand. Okay. If I buy gas for 43, it goes up by 43. Um, then if we make a $291 purchase, then I take my balance of 283 and add the 291 and get 574. And then if we make another purchase of $197, our balance will be $771. Okay, for computing the average daily balance, instead of having all 31 days in January listed out and averaging those 31 numbers, um, there, the way that you can do an average is, is we can shortcut a little bit, right? So if I wanted to average, let's, let's just look at, for example, averaging... Uh, one, 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 three, and three. Okay. Instead of adding one three times and adding three twice, I could say, well, well, let's make this even more of them just to make it seem easier. If I wanted to average all these numbers together, right, we start by adding them up and dividing by how many we have. Okay. But I could say, well, I have three ones. So when I add up one three times, I get three times one. When I add up three six times, I have six times three. Okay. So when I have repeated values, instead of adding them over again, I can do repeated addition by multiplication. Okay. There are nine things here. So that's what we're going to do here. Instead of listing out all the days, we're going to shortcut a little bit by saying, okay, if this balance was on two days, okay, then I can just multiply to to shortcut instead of adding it twice, right? Instead of adding this five times, I'll just multiply it by five. So we're going to compute how many days we have this balance, right? So from the one to the third is two days, from the third to the eighth is five days, from the eighth to the fifteenth is seven days. I'll do some blue. Okay. From the fifteenth to the twenty-fifth is ten days. From the twenty-fifth to the twenty-ninth is four days. And then the end of the month, we always want to be a little bit careful. Um, if we just took 31 minus 29 and subtracted, uh, we would get 2. But we want to count the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st. So we want all three days. So that our total number of days, if you add these up, adds up to the 31 days in January. Okay. So now, just to help me with this whole averaging business, I'm going to take the balance and multiply it by days. So 1,200 times 2 is 2,400. Um, 1,240 times 5 is 6,200. 240 times 7 is 1,680. 283 times 10 is 2,830. 574 times 4 gives me 2,296. And 771 times 3 gives me 2313. Okay. And so now to find my average, I can just add up these numbers and divide by 31. Okay. So the average daily balance, well, here, I'll, I'll add this up as a, as a total. Um, So when I add that up, I get 17,719. So my average daily balance is going to be this sum, 17,719, divided by 31. Okay. And there is a slightly faster way to do this on your calculator, um, but 
I'm a little bit nervous of teaching something that seems a little bit complicated. Maybe we'll look at that when we get to the statistics. Okay, so uh, we ended up carrying an average of $571.58 uh, on, on per day. All right. Okay, now we have to figure out how the interest is uh, computed. Okay. So the credit card has an annual rate, in this case, of 24%. And what we're doing here is we're looking at one single month. So just like we've done in the past when we were looking at um, like the amortization schedule, um, we want to say, all right, if I want to look at just one month, I have to break my annual rate up into a monthly rate. Okay, so the monthly rate is going to be 0.24 divided by 12. And in this case, that comes out very neatly. I'm going to leave it as a fraction, though, because um, when you're doing homework, it's a really good habit to leave things like this as a fraction when you type it in your calculator because when it doesn't work out to a nice terminating decimal, if you round your um, your rates, your, your uh, interest rates, then your numbers are all going to be off by a little bit at the end. And then you get wrong answers and you're like, why is this wrong? I used to, did the right formula. And it's like, yeah, it's just rounding. Okay, so that's the way to avoid rounding error. Leave it as a fraction. Okay, so then our interest... So then the interest charge is going to be this percentage of the average daily balance. Okay, so I have 0.24 divided by 12 times my average daily balance of 571.58. Okay, so we get $11.43. Okay. All right. So at the beginning of the next month, our statement balance assuming we don't have any late fees or anything like that, we're going to take our previous balance, 771, and add the interest rate. So the average daily balance doesn't really show up, okay? If you look at your credit card statement, you don't see that as one of the lines. It might be hidden away somewhere, or they might not even show it to you at all, because it's only used to compute the interest charge. So if they tell you what the interest charge is, then they may not even feel the need to tell you what the average daily balance is, and you'd never see it. Okay. All right, so that's how interest is computed.